Hi, I'm Ron James, and this is our very first live show from our new set here at MUFON Television. I'm really excited to have with me Steve Bassett from Paradigm Research Group. He is fresh from Europe with a new perspective and a new energy for his work. Steve, thanks for being here. Happy to be here. So tell us a little bit about what's been happening with you. I was in Europe for approximately seven months. I went over initially in April. And then I came back, uh, I think, August the 2nd. And then I returned to the US on January the 31st. I went over there to sort of regroup after the huge setback to the political initiative that I had been pursuing for two and a half years, starting in 2014. The election upended all of that. So let's, let's review that a little bit, because I talked to you right after the first Democratic debate. And um, you were pretty disappointed then. And then, of course, when the election went up the way it went, you had a lot riding on Hillary Clinton being in favor of disclosure and helping things along. And you were very instrumental in her being labeled as the ET candidate. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I can imagine the disappointment from that. Most people don't. I'm, I'm actually talking about this now at, at, at conferences. I've already given several lectures. I was at the Conscious Life Expo. I also was at the IFOC conference in Fountain Hills and so forth. And I'm talking about this, and I'm going to be saying a lot more. But there's an unknown story here that people, most people have no idea why was Podesta tweeting about the ET issue. Why was Hillary on Jimmy Kimmel and her husband on Jimmy Kimmel and Barack on, Jim, Barack Obama, on Jim, and President Obama on Jimmy Kimmel uh, and giving interviews to papers? Why were they talking about this issue? Well, the reason they were doing it is that after 10 years of sort of uh, stalking them on the uh, extraterrestrial issue and their connection to it, going back to the Rockefeller Initiative, 93 to 96, the story finally caught up with them. I was able to get th punched through the political media in Washington. I arrived on the, uh, on the, uh, in December of 2014, uh, or rather November, uh, after we shipped the entire record of the citizen hearing on disclosure to uh, every member of Congress, which included three hours of testimony about the Rockefeller Initiative and essentially the ET connection to the Clintons. They knew that. Uh, they knew something was going to come, but they didn't know. Uh, the story started running. My public relations person started contacting political media in Washington. I started trying to get meetings on the Hill, and the story started breaking in November. Uh, and the stories just continued into, into December, into January. The Rockefeller Initiative was mentioned. There were links to videos, as, as is the case with, obviously, uh, the online articles. The print articles also were covering it. Um, and the reporters started contacting the campaign. And they started contacting John Podesta and saying, what's this thing with the Rockefeller Initiative? What, 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 why, why is this, you know, what's going on, right? And they, 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 did, they didn't want to talk about it. They, they stonewalled everyone because they did not want to talk about this during the campaign. I am convinced she wanted to be the disclosure president, and that was the plan, but first she wanted to get the White House, and she felt that talking about this issue would endanger her, would be a risky thing, right? And they were going to play it safe down the middle. So uh, we forced them uh, out of their box and forced them to start talking about it. They had no choice. If they hadn't been doing some of these controlled, limited statements, then the press would have gotten even more intense. This is a way to sort of keep it at bay. But their biggest hurdle was the debates. There were like 36 debates and forums, ultimately counting the Republicans and the Democrats. Any one of those fine, very well-paid news hosts from these, all these shows that moderated them all, that's kind could of the way we run it, question, could right? have asked her or, or any of the Republican candidates or Bernie Sanders, uh, uh, what is this about your... The Rockefeller Initiative, what is this about, you know, why did John Podesta talk about releasing the files, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Not a single question, which is an interesting story in itself, including George Stephanopoulos, who was one of the hosts. And George Stephanopoulos was involved in the Rockefeller Initiative. He was in the White House uh, uh, as a key advisor to Clinton when it was going on for three years, right? But not a story that he wanted to cover once he became a journalist in 1996. And that was the major obstacle. They got through that. And they realized we're home free. And so they stopped talking on, so on June the 2nd. That was the last time they addressed the issue. Uh, in fact, it was uh, not far from here. It was at the Rancho Palos Verdes Code Conference, a $3,500 a ticket uh, high-end conference. Uh, and he spoke about it there. He was asked about it. And then they, they were quiet. But they felt they'd made it. They were going to win the election. Everybody thought, knew they were going to win the election. And so they didn't say anything else. Uh, and then, of course, all hell broke loose. So I finally got to get out of town. So I went to London and uh, uh, explored international possibilities. 
and one turned up, uh, a big one. So before we get to that, yeah. you know, I don't think people really understand how instrumental PRG was in driving the media that covered Hillary Clinton during that time. It was solely responsible for driving the media. So how many articles can, can you attribute 400, to published? 400 articles, and, and, in, in the English language press only. And at my website, paradigmresearchgroup.org, you can actually click, uh, you know, go through and you can find them and read them all if you want to. And 120 of those articles, including New York Times, Washington Post, Washington Times, and many other papers, included substantial material about PRG and me in there, right? About, oh yeah, he's doing this, he's doing that, and, and connecting PRG to what was going on. And yet, in the entire time, two and a half years, not a single news program on the network and cable news. So we're getting me a up. lot of print coverage and no, no actual no. video. They never called me up to go, why are you turning up in the New York Times? What's going on here? This, this says a lot about the situation with respect to cable and network news on this issue. They somehow have got a much tighter leash on them than clearly the print media do at this time. Or the, the constraints of money and ratings and everything else has them all scared shitless. I don't know. But as we'll learn, talk about later in this program, there was a parallel story going on that, mm -hmm. did, that I didn't know about, and I'm pretty sure didn't know about what I was doing in D.C. that is equally powerful, equally important. And uh, that, so the, the whole thing was far more interesting than I ever knew.